Hi, I'm Mark Bash, your executive editor for Fire Rescue One and FireChief.com. Welcome to our new studios, at least temporary studios, uh, coming to you from Bradenton, Florida. I want to talk to you today about a fire, um, a recent fire in Manchester, New Hampshire. We're going to play some video here uh, where a significant number of people were uh, rescued. Uh, there was a civilian fatality, and uh, it was a near miss for the fire department. I'm going to read to you an account uh, from one of my Facebook friends who uh, allowed me to share this, and I really want you to think about how many firefighters does it take, because that's a refrain I hear a lot, especially from some elected officials who really want to know how many firefighters does it take, because all they really do is sit around and wait for EMS calls, right? Okay, so I'm going to read this to you, and I want you to be thinking about it. We'll go back to the video in just a minute. So, those conditions you saw were the arrival conditions uh, for Engine 10. Uh, Engine 10 was returning from an EMS call. And this is as shared from uh, a Facebook uh, friend who uh, has knowledge of, of what happened there. So Engine 11 was first due returning from an EMS run. They were faced with heavy fire conditions on the AD corner, racing up all three floors of the six-unit occupied uh, multifamily dwelling. Uh, initially, uh, they went to an exterior attack, and you'll be able to see that in the video. They went to an exterior attack, but the captain did his 360 and ordered his crew into rescue mode. A total of uh, six or seven civilians were rescued over ladders. Uh, unfortunately, the captain was caught in a flashover and tried a ladder bail from the second floor. His SCBA strap became entangled in the tip of the ladder. A lieutenant from another company tried to get up to help him out, a firefighter from truck one was right there and saw that they were both in serious danger of being burned. He kicked the ladder out from under them to get them both to safety. The captain was taken to a hospital and then flown to Boston, where he was being treated for second and third degree burns, over 40% of his body. I do have an update uh, from his wife, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But as we go back to the video, I want everybody to be thinking about May Day procedures, making sure that May Day is part of your repertoire of training, that you're not only training on it one time, but that you're repeatedly working through the steps of a May Day process, not only how to get yourself out, but what you would say, what you would do. You know, I'm a fan of the who, what, where, and I'll talk about that again in just a couple minutes, but let's just watch right now. Now keep in mind what you're watching here. This is the first arriving um, units that are showing up. This this is what they were faced with when they arrived. So they're finishing to stretch that initial attack line, and it appears that their uh, tactic here is going to be a transitional attack. Hit it from the outside, get the bulk of that heavy fire knocked down, and then move in. Their officer is in the process of doing a 360, and it's when he gets done doing that 360 that you'll see they actually abandon the attack to begin the rescue of the six or seven people that they pulled out of that house. You know, I don't have all the facts in this case, obviously, but as uh, it was reflected in my Facebook post uh, of my uh, anger, if you will, about the constant refrain from people who do say, well, you don't need that many firefighters. You're just trying to spend the money, or it's a union thing, or it's this, or it's that. Well, you know what? At the end of the day, these folks had their hands full. And there was no way that the typical two, maybe three firefighters that come in the fire trucks are going to be able to handle all this to make the rescues, to keep themselves safe, and to keep their communities safe. I fully recognize that in a lot of cases that the, the staffing is what it is, and that's what the communities can afford. We need to make sure that we're making a constant refrain for increased staffing on the fire engines to get to at least four people on the fire truck to be able to perform all the tasks that need to be performed, to be able to keep each other safe and to be able to keep our community safe. The practice of continuing to allow two people, uh, you know, as you start, as we did in Highlands County, as we started, that's all we could afford to start with it, but it needs to be built upon. It cannot rest on its laurels just because you've got there. You've got to get to the point where we've got more people on these fire trucks. They don't just sit around all day and wait for EMS calls, but even when they do and when they run those calls like this, in the blink of an eye, they go from that EMS call to this. And oh, by the way, Manchester, New Hampshire, just today had another Mayday situation with two firefighters trapped in a fire. So that's twice in the last 10 days. 
So this isn't something that happens every once in a blue moon. So yes, these guys were coming back from an EMS run. It is something that they had waited for. They got the run, but as they're coming back, they go from that mundane every day to this. Just in that blink of an eye. I don't think that the people in that house cared whether the people in that fire truck were paid or volunteer, black or white, man or woman. What they cared about was that people showed up to do the job and enough people showed up to do the job. And two people on a fire truck, it's a recipe for disaster, folks. And when those firefighters get there, those two, they, they can do a lot of stuff. But when confronted with that, and confronted with six, seven people needing to be rescued, two's not enough. So, as I said in my Facebook post, Madam Commissioner, yes, you do need that many firefighters and more. As we continue to watch the video, I want to go back to, circle back to the May Day training and uh, brings a couple things to mind. First and foremost uh, is May Day training. We need to make sure that May Day training is part of the regular repertoire of things that you and your company are doing. Uh, and don't have this just be a one and done kind of thing. You know, don't take the training or do one of the drills and think, okay, we got this. Uh, you need to make sure that people are regularly exercising themselves on what they're going to say, how they're going to say it, put them under the conditions, black out their masks, do the things you need to do in training uh, to, to get a little bit of that real feel into what they're doing and then continuously practice that. Uh, there's a lot of tools and tricks out there uh, for, for folks. Uh, I am a fan of the who, what, where. Um, I am much more interested in uh, who's in trouble, what the problem is, and where they are than all of the other things. And I think it's a lot easier for people to remember the who, what, where than uh, some of the other acronyms that are out there. Um, so if uh, we train our folks, train them on um, getting a report of who, what, and where, and then command needs to take it from there uh, to continue the, the Mayday uh, the rescue attempt. Uh, so that's number one, is making sure that Mayday training is part of our regular repertoire of stuff. And number two is the staffing issue. We do need that many firefighters. In the case of the video, you had a lieutenant and a captain and a firefighter who all uh, had to come together to be able to help each other out. But it's absolutely ridiculous for us to be thinking that we're going to have an engine company doing everything that needs to be done with less than four people on it. And we need to drive that point home every chance we can everywhere we go with every politician we have the opportunity to talk to. And when they think it's BS, show them that video and talk to them about what's going on in, in uh, situations like that. And with a firefighter who's got second and third degree burns over 40% of his body. Now, I told you earlier I had an update from an, uh, the firefighter's wife. Uh, she does indicate that uh, the doctors have uh, taken the bandages off of his arms today and looked at them. They look good, put them back on, so he's got a, a lot more grafting to go through. Uh, he's got the, the burns on his, uh, uh, the second and third degree burns on his arms, his hands, his shoulder, his thighs, his back. Uh, folks, we cannot continue to accept one or two people on our fire engines. Even if this company had three or four people, it clearly wasn't enough for what they were faced with. But we cannot continue to accept one or two uh, firefighters being assigned to, to our fire engines. We have got to make sure that we are driving home that point continuously and that there's a plan to get us to a point where we get three and then we get to four. And you know what? If there are studies that prove that we need more, then we get to more. But we have got to be doing everything we can to convince not only the elected officials, but our community that the number of firefighters we put on there has nothing to do with whether you're paid or volunteer. It has to do with safety. It has to do with safety for our crews. It has to do with safety for our communities. It's incumbent upon us to get this done. It's not going to happen by itself. We have got to come together, paid and volunteer, union or not, we have got to come together and make sure that we're advocating for safe staffing on our fire engines. We've got to make sure that one or two people in the fire truck is not allowed to be the norm. We're following the second May Day out of uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, it appears that the firefighters are okay. Two were trapped in a fire today. But we're following that. We'll have more uh, as we're able to get it to you or, or as the story warrants. This is Mark Bashore, Executive Editor for Fire Rescue One and FireChief.com. Thanks for listening. 
Have a great day on purpose. Keep safe, stay smart, and take care.